So whether you're a new homeowner, just moving out, longtime veteran, or a college kid starting to uh, live in your first apartment with your friends and trying to fix stuff, we're going to go over the basic tools that you need to get the basic uh, tasks around the house done. And uh, this, this toolkit will be the one to expound on as you go through projects in life. Now, in order to, to stick with the theme of frugality in this channel, I don't want you to be spending a ton of money going out and buying these tools. A lot of the tools, when I first started collecting tools and building and fixing stuff, I started out with uh, going to garage sales, uh, estate sales, picking uh, tools up at uh, pawn shops, um, and only occasionally if I needed one specialty item and I was working on a project I needed it right then and there and I didn't have time to go around and look for it, um, a special socket or something like that for an automobile, that's when I would go and buy it at the shop. Uh, go down to the hardware store and pick it up new. But a large portion of tools are out there. You might have a little bit of uh, wear, tear, and rust on them, but it's still highly functional. And that's what we want to talk. We want to target finding the good ones that still work and can get you uh, get you started on your simple toolkit. We don't want to spend a ton of money. It's not going to go out and buy all the brand new, top of the line, snap-on tools. We just want to start out with a simple basic toolkit that'll get you started at home for less than fifty dollars. So the basic foundation of any toolkit, it's going to be your screwdriver and uh, use these for tightening things, building things, fixing adjustments, anything that's going to drive with the, you know, anything is built and held together with screws, you're going to need to be able to tighten that. Two basic types, you have a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver. I recommend a number one and a number two Phillips. Uh, that should get you through most sizes, most uh, size screws that you need. These short stubbies are really handy for small areas, working uh, in vehicles or in the back of uh, sinks, tightening up those uh, collar screws. And then of course, you can get down here for some of the smaller size screwdrivers working on smaller, more delicate things. Go to your, uh, if you go to your hardware store, uh, you get a you know, basic set of screwdrivers that'll get you started. Or again, just kind of mix and match from uh, going to garage sales, finding tools that way. Um, the next thing after screwdrivers we're going to want to get is something to, uh, to pound some nails. Uh, good old fashioned hammer. The sky's the limit on what you can get with a hammer, but here's just a simple wooden claw hammer. can hammer nails to smaller sizes, maybe not uh, what you're going to want for framing. It's a full on framing hammer, but uh, you can pound some nails, put some stuff together, hang some pictures, pull out some nails with this claw in the back here. Very important, handy tool. Uh, uh, many, many uses for a hammer. After that, we're gonna need some pliers, right? And I got two uh, types here. These are needle nose pliers, and they also come with some wire cutters right in the center. These needle nose pliers are good for working on the finer things, uh, getting into the small areas. And then you can also twist and wrap wire around them. Uh, they're kind of a rounded, bevel to them makes them super handy and then uh, some slip jaw pliers like these this allows you to uh, adjust what you're grabbing so sometimes you'll have to grab and hold something twist it uh, tighten it um, and this has various various size teeth there uh, that allow you to um, allow you to grip different things different size bolts and nuts and then uh, the jaws slip so you can open it and make it wider or narrower in the same vein with that, I really uh, find the channel locks uh, are just an amazing all around tool. The channels here allow the, uh, the adjustment of the tool for its grip, right? So this allows you to get around larger pipes, collars, uh, that type of stuff, twist things, grab things. Uh, you've got pretty good leverage with the length of the handle here. Um, an amazing little multi-tool. In that same vein, sometimes you might want uh, a larger cutting device. The needle nose pliers have a wire cutter there, but the set of dice will uh, improve your ability to cut stuff. And it's got a flush side, a flush side here with a rounded nose, so it'll allow you to get right up next to something and, and uh, snip that off without having too large of a tag in. Now at the basic toolkit, I really kind of struggled with whether or not to add a socket set. And sockets and wrenches are 
uh, almost invaluable. I use them uh, a lot daily, but just to get started, um, I really, after thinking about it, just a good old adjustable wrench here. This will allow you to tighten most things and come loose. Now, you're gonna want to eventually, if you continue to work on cars, metal parts, uh, things with bolts and nuts, you're gonna need to work on both ends, sockets, ratchets, those things are gonna really help you out in the long run, but just a good old adjustable wrench will get you started. Um, two other items I have here, you probably already have lying around your house, is a good old flashlight. Uh, it's a small little mag light. It's handy to keep in your pocket, shirt pocket, whatnot, uh, allow you to see what you're working on, see in those dark spaces. And then of course, I see a utility knife, cutting boxes, uh, chipping away and stuff. Uh, just handy little uh, tool to have. Next, you need a level. This is just a real simple, it's called torpedo level, but it gives you a level on the vertical, the horizontal, and in a 45 degree angle. It's also magnetic, so it'll allow you to stick uh, to a piece of metal. Uh, you can stick it to your refrigerator, stick it on the side of something that you're adjusting, and allow you to see that. So, handy device, um, very useful for especially just lining up pictures as you're hanging those. And uh, another item I recommend is just a utility putty knife. This little tool is used for scraping. It's got different bevels and angles. You can scrape and clean and adjust um, a bunch of stuff. You can also use it to pry things loose. Pretty handy, uh, very cheap utility little tool. Uh, and finally, a tape measure. Um, Tape measure preferably with a locking mechanism, right? So it can hold that distance. Uh, 16 feet is probably uh, a sufficient length. If you're getting into framing longer distances of lumber and such, you might need a larger one, but 16 feet will get you started uh, and in the right direction. And uh, I did throw an interesting tool on here, kind of as a, as a do it all. This is just a multi purpose um, screwdriver that has quick change bits. And so it allows you to switch those out. Something like this is pretty handy. Their durability, uh, they're a little bit more complex and more moving parts. Not quite as uh, strong as just your old fixed standard screwdriver, but a simple little screwdriver like this is a pretty, pretty handy little tool. Um, and then finally, one other item I really recommend having in your toolbox is just a little simple uh, organizer kit like this. You can put different nails and screws. Uh, if you have different razor blades or spare razor blades, you can put all those in here and just keep uh, keep that handy in your toolbox without spilling all over and making a mess. One tool I forgot to mention was the Allen wrench. Make sure you get a set in both metric and standard sizes. You'll be using them all over the place to tighten things. If you ever put together IKEA furniture, you know what I mean. And I'll also make sure they come equipped with a good uh, holder because uh, the smaller ones tend to walk away.